Hello Leo friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Leo August 2021 Astrology Must Knows. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com to see the long list of free goodies that I have for you. You don't want to miss out on anything that I work hard to create for you. Also, if you'd like to be an astrologer as your profession and to do it to earn money or you'd like to do it because you want to help your family and friends and your own self-development, you will love my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course you can see at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. So in order to use this video in the best ways, there are two things to know. The first thing is that this is for you if Leo is your sun sign or your moon sign or your rising or your Mercury or your Venus or your Mars or whatever you're watching for. We have way more complexity to us than just our sun sign and there are lots of layers of our astrological truth and this video is for you if you have Leo placements, regardless of what they are. The second thing is if you're a late degree Leo placement, especially the later parts of the later degrees, so we'll say like around August 15th through the rest of the sign or from around 24 or so degrees through the rest of the um, degrees, 24 to 29 degrees, I highly recommend you additionally watch my Virgo videos and watch both of them, Leo and Virgo. And if you watch other astrologers, also watch Leo and Virgo because you late degree people are um, very likely to have insights in both of those reports. Okay, so what's going on this month? Let's go through my list of must knows, things to celebrate, things to watch out for. The first thing, that is very exciting, that's a must know, is that this is a period of time where we're in what I call open stars. So starting from around July 7th or around September 7th or 8th, definitely including the whole month of August, we are free from personal planet retrogrades and they are shadow periods, which means that that confusion, that uncertainty, that things being called into question, plans dissolving away, you know, everything breaking in your house and your car and your devices, all of that stuff that went on the second half of May, June, that made you be very introspective and look towards the past and kind of go back over things, that energy is totally different now and it's all about forward movement, the present, the future, taking plans, activating possibilities. And so it's an amazing time for making big decisions, engagements, weddings, big parties, travel plans, anything having to do with large purchases, investments, um, contracts, commitments, moves, anything like that is very well supported this month and the odds that you'll have the clarity, the um, ambition, and the tools that you need to make things happen are going to be in much greater likelihood. A couple of other things that are making these stars open and lighter this month. One is that we are not in the brunt of the harshest outer planet conflicts like we were in June and it echoed a little bit into July. But in, in August, the Saturn Uranus square that is setting the theme for the whole year, which you can look for my video if you search for Annie Botticelli Saturn square Uranus, you can understand this aspect more. It's a very big one. Anytime outer planets come in conflict, uh, um, outer planets being the ones that are further from us, come into connection, meaningful connection with each other, especially conflictive aspects like this is, we really, really see it. So understanding that is important, but something to know, we must know about this month is that those energies are falling more into the backdrop in August. They're not flared up in the front as they had been. So that makes things a little bit lighter. Also, we're out of the brunt of eclipse season. May, June, July, we're right in the height of eclipse season, even July, even though the eclipse was, the last one was in June because of the afterquakes. So we're in a time now where we're kind of at a rest and a pause where things eclipse related are moving and in the backdrop are just kind of flowing, but they're not, you know, it's not the like finger you finger in the socket feeling that you're just, you know, anxious and um, the big, big, big changes. Everything's kind of starting to settle in from the changes that occurred from the eclipses. Okay, so another major must know is that we have a series of Uranus trines. Three of them are in August, one is in early September. This is very, very exciting because a trine is the most fabulous aspect in all of astrology. And when there is a trine with an outer planet, especially when that outer planet is in an Earth sign, that can bring very permanent, long-term positive effects. And Uranus being the planet of surprises means the odds of happy surprises and things coming out of the blue that will benefit you are increased. And that influence is for the whole month into early September. So 
I'm going to give you some dates where this is even more strongly highlighted, but do know that the days before and after these dates can have the manifestations because we can't neatly, you know, people try to compartmentalize and just neatly put things in places and astrology doesn't always work that way because life doesn't always work that way and astrology is life, you know? So in the days around the dates I'm going to give you, you can see the manifestations. And also know if you'd like to have a more complete list of all the sweet aspects, all the salty ones, what you can expect from them um, delivered into your inbox one month early, you can sign up for my free email newsletter at anyhelpsyou.com. Okay, so Uranus trines Venus on August 2nd and 3rd, Mercury 19th and 20th of August, Mars on the 21st and 22nd, and then in early September, we've got that Sun trine with Uranus, okay? So a sequence of hopefully happy surprises, groundbreaking insights, exciting breakthroughs and solutions, um, any those type of things are accentuated. Now on the topic of the blue moon, there is a blue moon on August 21st, 22nd, so we not only have that Mars trine, we also have a full moon in Aquarius blue moon on August 21st, so the days around that time. Blue moons are just as we've he heard them. We, we have the saying, once in a blue moon, that's because blue moons are more rare than regular moons, and it can bring in magical opportunities. And the fact that there is such a sweet aspect happening at the same time increases the odds of awesomeness at this full moon. Full moons can always be a mixed bag of high emotion for better or worse. They can bring things to the surface that can be jostling, but the odds of it working out really well are greater with this sweet aspect, okay? So this is a time for exciting developments along the Aquarian fronts. This can have, you know, a rare opportunity for magical transformation. And again, you know, sudden game-changing insights, those types of same things that Uranus was bringing in, the blue moon can also bring in in a very positive way. Now for Leos specifically, this blue moon is going to happen in your partnership sector. So the chance for meeting someone like the ones in a blue moon meeting are also increased, whether that's a friendship or a helper, your perfect nanny, your perfect accountant, you know, your perfect partner, um, your perfect teacher for your kids, any of those relationship-based things or a breakthrough with your um, current relationship or a nice event, something like that, you've got that blue moon energy in your relationship space. So that's very exciting. Now, this is great for everyone and has the potential to be magical for everyone, but especially because this is an air sign, air and fire signs can get extra blessings. So as a Leo, you have a chance for extra blue moon blessings. And if you're a late degree Leo, you have even more of a chance. So between 24 and 29 degrees, so essentially August 16th and on, you have even more of a chance for it connecting with you. The way I can best explain this, I'm using a, an analogy of a butterfly. Say a butterfly is flying around and most people, everyone I know, love to see butterflies. No matter how many times you see them, it doesn't get old. It's like, oh wow, look cool, there's a butterfly, okay? So when there's a trine going on in the stars, it's like, wow, there's a butterfly, that's really nice, right? But the more closely that aspect in the sky links into something in your chart, it becomes more personal to you. So then the butterfly lands on you and you get actual butterfly kisses from, from the from that experience. So it brings it from out there closer to your experience and more personally. Okay, so the chance for a butterfly landing on you is increased for those of you August 16th or so and on or degrees around 24 to 29 degrees. Okay. Oh, also I wanted to mention that the developments that can happen not only from the seventh house partnership perspective, but also from the actual Aquarius energies. I alluded to this earlier, but big breakthroughs, elucidating events, um, blue moon types of experiences in the house of friendships, social um, media, social groups, your tribe, finding your tribe, people that you know really re you resonate with, um, internet-based projects, web, you know, if you're trying to get your business online, um, technology, anything having to do with humanitarian efforts, all of those are highlighted at this time as well. Okay, so another must know is that we still have strong energy in Leo. Obviously the sun is still moving through Leo, Mercury is moving through Leo. Um, those of you who are in the early designation, so July born Leos, you will have gotten your kisses from the sun and Mercury 
in the latter part of July. But those of you who are August born, you still have kisses from the sun and Mercury crossing your placement in August, okay? So that's the vast majority of you. And that's very exciting. These kisses can look like really sweet information, communication, recognition, you know, um, high creativity, happiness, just, you know, bursts of joy and excitement and support. And um, there are many different ways these kisses can look, but we do usually feel something, especially if you're looking for it. And most of you have that to look forward to. And since I post these early, all of you really have it to look forward to because I'm posting this, you know, way before any of you get these kisses. So you all have it to look forward to from the time that I'm looking at. Okay, now let's see. So of course, the sun being in your sign means that it's birthday time, okay? So for those of you who had your July birthdays already, happy birthday. For those of you who are having them in August, happy birthday. And know that if you're watching for something other than your sun sign, this is still a magical and exciting time to set intentions. There is this idea of birthday wishes. Birthday wishes are astrological. The fire and the candle is the energy of the sun and creativity and the fact that we are here to create in this wonderful world comes at the, really strongly at this birthday time. So the universe is more receptive to your wishes at your birthday. Okay, so definitely look for my video called Making Wishes Come True. You can search for Annie Botticelli, Making Wishes Come True, and see more about how to maximize your birthday wishes. But do know that even if you have another Leo placement besides the sun, you have a chance for setting your intentions and having those intentions be enhanced. Okay, and um, so you've got that going on. Now, in general, having a first house aspected as Leos do at this time, this started in July. This is true through most of August. This is a time to enhance your physical body. So improve your health, you know, focus more on your body, focus more on your appearance, improving, making yourself feel better, working your self-esteem, anything having to do with um, putting yourself out there and being seen and being recognized is very much supported now. You also all have very strong um, money stories coming up and those trines are also aspecting finances. Okay, so Virgo is going to start enhancing your money house and the trines are enhancing your money house. Um, so all throughout the month of August into early September, we've got this sequence of possible happy surprises in your finances. So that's also very exciting. As the Leo uh, planets are still moving in that space, there is an increased chance for creativity, things involving children, things involving your true love, and romance and since you've got the combination of this sun and mercury energy in leo which rules true love and then you've got the blue moon in your partnership energy there's definitely stronger energy of support in your relationship space and meeting people and because aquarius is so accentuated somebody connecting you to something whether it's a dating partner or it's a job or it's a business opportunity or it's a client other people are going to continue to play a major role in connecting you, being a major uh, piece uh, in a puzzle. So the more you say yes to opportunities that people are trying to give you, the more you have a chance for activating those potentials. If you're trying to have a baby, trying to get your creative babies out there, anything like that is very supported at this time. Concentration for difficult tasks is also going to be enhanced because of the energies in Virgo. So this can help you to get a budget, get organized with your finances, pay off debt. You might find that you can pay off a lot of debt, get taxes dealt with, things that have been looming over your head. Things like that are very much um, wanting to be focused on. And also just reorganizing your life and setting some good systems in place that help you to work less and have a better experience. The more you can have workable systems, the less you have to be in chaos and confusion and the more you can streamline your efforts and enjoy your life. Okay, so let's see what else we've got going on here. A um, Couple of additional must-knows. We do have more salty aspects than sweet ones this month, but since they're not outer planet clashes and we're not in the, sh you know, in the, in the uh, heaviness of that, they're pretty much just like small nuisance bumps that can bring some awkwardness and bring, you know, confusion and minor interruptions and tests to things. But they are, they're the types of things, unless you have things tying into your personal chart that are superseding this, these types of general aspects tend to pass pretty quickly. And there are lots of sweet aspects that are occurring to help bolster and offset any challenges that come. Okay, so 
Another must know is that Jupiter's still in retrograde, so things involving immigration, publishing, teaching, learning, education that may have started to move into the backdrop in um, you know a few months ago, they might start picking up steam as we get closer to October. So just know that if something seemed to really cool off and if nothing's really happening, as we get closer to October and get into October, some of those things might race forward very, very quickly. Now, Jupiter is back in Aquarius, and this is really good news for Leos because an air sign, regardless of the fact that it opposes your sign, is still in a very conducive placement for fire. Okay, so um, Jupiterian expansion flames are going to be fueling your Leo energies, and that might come through some points of conflict, or it might come from you having to be pulled in two different directions, but your chance for doing well in both of the areas you're being pulled are high. Okay, now definitely check out my video called Jupiter in Aquarius for Leo because I outline all of the dates where you're getting your exact Jupiter opposition hits for every one of all of the different degrees and all the different birthdays in that video. So just search for Jupiter in Aquarius for Leo, Annie Botticelli, or you can go to my homepage and look for the Jupiter playlist. But in general, those of you who are from around August 14th on through the rest of the sign or 22 degrees through the rest of the sign, you still have an additional Jupiter opposition that's going on, and you'll definitely wanna know what Jupiter moving through the seventh house can bring. So check that video out for more details about that. If you want even more details about how the current and upcoming astrology may affect you personally and how you can make the most of the opportunities, your first one hit stop is to go to anniehelpsyou.com. Right there on the front page, you can sign up for my free email newsletter. You will also see a list of all of the other free things that I have for you each month, and you can interface with them through that one organized section. When you sign up for my free email newsletter, you get many wonderful bonuses, including a monthly write-up one month ahead delivered into your inbox of all of the notable aspects of the month, what you can expect from them, and the sweet and salty dates, and a general write-up of the points to note as the astrology must knows. You definitely want to go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. That's my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. And check out the free courses that I have there. And I also have paid courses. And if you think I put a lot into my free resources, you should see the, the depth and complexity of my paid courses. If you would like to be an astrologer as your trade, be a professional astrologer, add astrology to any of your other work offerings, or just do astrology in a deeper way for your friends and family, for your own self-development, then you will love my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course. This is a mega course that will equip you to do whatever you'd like to do with astrology. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye!